great people like you that are international, nonverbal, body language, and really human behavior experts, it all comes from some amazing origin story, a backstory that created this spark when we were younger that inspired us to want to become who we are today. So, Mark, what was that spark all those years ago that made you into this human behavior phenom in the world? Yeah, lovely. Well, look, I I'm going to tell you a couple of things that I think are important. One is that when I was a little kid back in England, we used to have a lot of beach holidays because obviously England, you know, Britain is surrounded by water. We're a little island. And so a lot of holidays you go to the beach. And I used to love looking at the sea and and getting in rock pools which are those you know pools of water that get left when the sea goes out and as a little kid you can get your hands in there and pull out sea creatures you know shrimps and crabs and and look at sea anemones and starfish and i used to love that movement you know especially the movement in your in your hand when you can kind of grab a creature and it moves and then you set it off in the water and it starts to move in a way that you kind of wonder you always kind of wonder what's going on in that thing's head not that not that actually some of those animals have much of a, a head at all but I, I got fascinated by the movement in water i was also massively a fan of jacques cousteau's undersea world yeah you're nodding your head in fact i i have the ploprof watch that he made oh, famous wow. yeah so so you know i was massively into that into that undersea world exploration animals how they move and what and what are they thinking some of them you know frankly weren't thinking anything and from that just thought you know but what about human beings and, and how are we thinking and how are we moving so movement and thought got kind of shoved together at a very early age of curiosity and fascination so who did you go to the beach with? Oh, mum and dad and my sister. And, and later on, I had another brother and, and, and sister who were born a lot later. Same mum and dad, but just born my sister 10 years after me. And we would head to the beach as well. And I guess that was an opportunity as a, as a, as an, a teenager at that point to be there with my younger brother and sister and, and be in the rock pools as well. So it was family, family holidays, Robin. Where did all this curiosity come from, you think? You know, there was a British culture, I think, of of the outdoors, you know, and, and the sea. We're a seafaring nation because we're so small. It's like, right. got to go and find some other country and invade it and find out what's there, <laughs> you know. So, so, so there's, there's a culture. There was also a culture of natural history television. And, and learning from television, you know, kids like me, we, we watched TV and we learned from TV. So when you think about it, you know, over here, I've got Desmond Morris's man watching, which you which is now people watching and you probably know it quite well. And, uh, uh, and that started off as a TV series in the 1970s. And so, you know, that developed my thought of, you know, you can really think carefully about human beings and groups of human beings and why they do what they do and uncover that from their movement from their behavior and and and, and i was just fascinated by that understanding people better because people are confusing